Hi internet friends, my name is John and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use vanilla MVC controllers with Umbraco V8. Now this is episode 7 in my series of how to build a website using Umbraco V8. If you want to follow along the series and you don't want to lose this content, hit that subscribe button now, be a legend, hit subscribe, do it. So the good news is, is that actually registering a vanilla MVC controller with Umbraco is fairly simple. However, fully understanding all the concepts that I'm going to cover in this video is quite full on. Now I'm fully aware that any tech video which is more than 10-15 minutes will bore the pants off of everyone. So what I'm going to do is split this video into two episodes. In this episode, we're going to be creating a layout, a header and a footer. I'm going to show you some optimization techniques to make sure that your header and footer loads as quickly as possible. And then we're going to register our custom vanilla MVC controller with Umbraco. Now, registering a controller will involve us understanding what a composer and a component is. And this is actually quite an in-depth topic. So what I'm going to do is leave composers and components into the next video. This will be a quick whistle-stop tour of just registering and briefly touching them in this video. So let's crack on. Boom. In this video, we're going to be creating this very simple layout. As you can see, we've got a header, a footer, a nav, and a main body. If you haven't got it already, it's got Mr. Potato Head because we're creating a header. Potato Head header. You don't get comedy gold like that anywhere else. So let's take a deep dive into what's going on here. What you see in the screen in front of you is a very basic route hijacked example. In the CMS, I've created a document type called Composers and Components. Nothing special there. We've gone over that loads of times already. I'm using the view model pattern I outlined in episode four, and I'm also using the model builder to generate Umbraco models. Now, if I look at the corresponding view, you can see that I've got this layout thing, and in here, I'm calling this shared underscore simple CSHTML. So if we look in Solution Explorer, in here, I've got a corresponding view right here. Now I've got some simple CSS in here, which is using CSS grid, just to make it look a bit more easier for you to understand. And in here, I've got three things. So we'll start with the HTML action. So what this is doing is calling a controller. What we are expecting is the shared partial controller to be called. And in there, we're expecting a method called render header. So this is the action that's gonna be called. Now we've also got a render body this is really important. Every single time you're creating a layout, you'll need this. Otherwise, Umbraco and .NET in general will blow up. So let's have a quick look at this shared partial controller. So as you can see, I've got shared partial controller. This hasn't been registered in Umbraco. This has got nothing to do with Umbraco. It's using the default MVC controller. So it's got a constructor. And as you can see here, I'm passing in iSight pages. Now this was created within episode five. So watch that if you don't know what that is. And in here, you can see that we have our render header action. So in here, we're creating a very simple view model. We're pulling some settings from our settings page, and then we're calling this partial view, which is in site furniture and header. Let's look in here. And as you can see, we have our partials, site furniture, header. And in here, all we've got is load of images, which is of Mr. Potato Head. In a vanilla MVC website, creating a controller with a valid action and then within our views using an html helper like action should result in some beautiful html being rendered on page however as you can see by this nasty error message in front of us things are different in Umbraco. so on the error message in front of us we see no routes in the route table defined and this kind of makes sense so let me explain why in vanilla MVC, a URL is mapped directly to a controller and an action. So let's say our controller is called John, and then the action is called is a legend. Our URL would be John slash is a legend. However, in a CMS, pages are created by content editors within the CMS itself. This means that a page is stored in a database, and we don't have that direct mapping from URL to controller and an action. This means that if you want to use a custom controller with an Umbraco, what we'll need to do is register it with the route table. And this is where things get slightly different. So traditionally in MVC and with Umbraco 7, registering a route would be done within the global ASCX. As you can see on the screen in front of me, I've got an Umbraco 7 example. And on line 15 right here, you can see that we're registering routes. Anyone who's been doing .NET for ages will recognize this as fairly standard. In V8, we have the concept of composers and components, and this is where we now need to register our route. On the screen in front of us, you can see an example of how you can register a custom route with Umbraco. 
Now I've got two classes here. The first one that I'll talk about is called register custom route component. In here, it's implementing iComponent. This is the important thing. And iComponent exposes two methods. The first one, initialize, is run when the CMS starts. The second one, terminate, is run when the CMS finishes. In general, you don't care about terminate. You won't need to worry about it. Now in initialize, you can see that we now have access to the route table. And this rule should look familiar to anyone who's done .NET. So in here, I'm creating a custom name. This can be anything. I'm defining the URL partial slash action. So this means that anything which is using the shared partial controller should map to this URL. So this means that we should, in theory, be able to have a working website now, shouldn't we? I compiled the code, hit refresh, and eagerly anticipated seeing the joyous Mr. Potato Head, but instead, no, I've been denied, slapped in the face with another error message. And this time we're getting an unable to resolve type shared partial controller. And this is because Mbako V8 ships with dependency injection. And whenever you're creating a vanilla MVC controller, you will always need to register it with Mbako, otherwise you'll get this error. Let's see how we can do that. In order to register our vanilla MVC controller within Mbako, we're gonna to have to create a custom composer. Now, Mbako ships with three types of composers. There's an initial composer and a core composer. These are more used by the CMS to register things on startup. The iUser composer is more for developers to register their own custom things. So we have an iComponent, and iComponents are more used to add in functionality to Mbako. And we have iComposers, and iComposers is more used to register things on startup. As said, this is quite in depth, so we'll cover it in another video. Don't need to worry about it too much here. But as you can see on the screen in front of us, I have a I use composer. It exposes or implements the compose method. And in here we have access to composition. So in the composition, I can do a dot register. And then in the dot register, I can register our shared partial controller. And this is essentially all we need to do to inform Mbako that we have this vanilla MVC controller that we want it to be aware of. So if we compile this, our page should now load. Now that we have a custom route defined and we've registered our controller, the page loads. Huzzah! Now, before we wrap up, I actually want to talk to you. Why do you think that I used the vanilla controller in the first place to render out our header and footer? Would it not have been much more simpler to put all that HTML directly in the layout? And the answer lies with performance. So picture this, each and every page request that uses that layout will have to generate all the HTML for the header, the menu, the footer. This is gonna take X amount of time. Imagine if we could cache our header and footer so that once an hour, we only have to generate all that HTML and all of the page requests can use a cache version instead. This is gonna speed up our website no end. It's gonna improve our page load times. And that's exactly why we use the vanilla controller because this allows us to follow this technique. So on the page in front of us, I'll show you technique one in terms of caching. And this is using the output cache attribute. So within our shared partial controller, if I decorate my uh, action here with output cache attribute, I can set the duration to 3,600, which hoping my math is correct is an hour. This means that the header will be generated and cached once an hour. Now going back to our layout, there's an additional way of caching partials, and this is technique two, and this is using the cached partial helper that Mbako gives us. So using cache partial, we pass in the name of our partial, which is footer. You can see my footer partial here. There's nothing clever here. In real life, it'd be a bit more complicated. Parameter two is the view model that the, the um, partial is gonna use. And again, we're possessing the cache time. So this is 3,600. So again, following this technique of being able to split out the header and footer into separate partials means that we can cache things and it will make our website a lot more performant. And this is the reason why we wanted to follow this technique in the first place. In terms of the series progress, I think we're doing really well. We've now rendering out a header and a footer optimally, so it's cached really well. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about composers and components. In this video, we sort of scratched the surface of them. However, they're really powerful and there's loads that you can do. So we're gonna take a deep dive in the next video. So what do you think? Do you like these techniques? I'd love to hear your theories below. If you want to be an absolute legend, hit that subscribe button right now. If you want to do me a solid, please hit that like button. I would very much appreciate it. Please do it now. 
Otherwise, I hope you have a great day and happy coding.